This is our Ecology Lecture 9, the effect of human activity on the ecosystem. You can go to our PowerPoint and take a look at this video. I don't actually remember what it is, but I assume it's interesting since I put it there. Um, so uh, there are a few ways that humans affect the biosphere. There, there are very many ways, and we're not going to have enough time to ever learn about all the terrible things that we do to the ecosystem. But here are some examples. Um, groundwater contamination, depletion, depletion right? The, just all the ways that we produce from the factories um, get released in water. We have the elimination of habitats. Um, because of the human selfishness, we build houses at places that should be left for animals. We build more houses. We do a lot of things. There's loss of biodiversity as a result of elim elim elimination of habitats. And there is pollution of the air um, by our factories because we want to make profits and make a lot of money. And what do we do with that money? I'm not sure. Anyway, the next one is eutrophication. Eutrophication is, um, is very similar to algae bloom. So what you should remember is first, the cause of eutrophication. The cause of eutrophication is in this grid right here, is the use of fertilizers. When we overuse fertilizers, right? We, we use fertilizers to make our plants healthier and get more productivity and get more plants, but we use too much fertilizer, just like a lot of other things that we do that are too much. Um, <laughs> I'm sounding so negative, but anyway, always all that fertilizer, there's nitrogen and phosphate. We're using this because we want the limiting nutrients to be no longer limited so we can get as much plants uh, to grow as possible. But as a result of that, those nutrients that are not taken up by the plants are washed off into rivers and lakes and streams and the ocean. And, and we call that runoff. And then the result is now the water has too much nutrient. And the result of that is all that too much nutrient is going to cause an algae bloom because all that algae is now so happy. They're going to make so many baby algae. And your lake and rivers are all going to be covered an algae. First off, that's not pretty, um, but there's also the problem that all those algae, they can't live on forever. Immortality hasn't happened yet, and this algae at some point is going to die. And what's going to happen to this, this dead algae? There are going to be decomposers breaking up the algae and recycling the algae. This is supposed to be a good thing, except now there's so much dead algae and so much decomposing that all the decomposers is using up all the oxygen in the, uh, the water and breathing out all those carbon dioxide. The result is your water that's supposed to uh, be there for the fish and plants and uh, you know, your phytoplankton, zooplankton, there is no oxygen in there now and everything dies. And when everything dies, decomposers break them down again, take more oxygen, it's just a bad cycle of sadness. And this, is, <laughs> this whole terrible thing is called eutrophication. So if you look right here, um, it shows you the process of eutrophication. And first off, what it is, excessive richness of nutrients in some sort of body of water caused by runoff of uh, fertilizers. And the effect of that is algae bloom. So you can take a look at um, this whole process. Actually, eventually the lake could disappear as well. So I'm, I'm going to change this detritivores into decomposers. Um, the lake can actually dis disappear because all that dead matter is going to build up at the bottom of the lake and the lake is going to disappear. And that's not fun. So here's a before and after picture of uh, eutrophication. Great sadness. The next one is acid rain. Acid rain um, is in the name again. Acid uh, is in the rain. But what's causing acid rain? There is sulfur and there's nitrogen. And the sulfur and nitrogen are released by burning fossil fuels by the factories. As you can see, fossil fuels being burned and all that gas with sulfur and nitrogen is going to go in the air and go into the cloud. And when those gases get mixed up with water, it will actually turn into acid or turn the water into a, a, an acidic pH, which is less, less than 7. And then the rain is going to fall. The problem with that is the rain, um, 
is, is now acid rain. Instead of having our normal rain, we have acid rain. Problem with that is a lot of organisms depend on certain pH to live, and when you have the acid rain, those organisms will not be able to live. And it also, you know, we only care about human beings, so how is it affecting us human? We have a lot of architectures and, you know, our cars, our buildings, our um, sculptures, all of those can be damaged by acid rain as well. So why should you care? Um, maybe in the future, if you can afford it, um, you can use some clean energy and just help a little bit, whatever you could do, right? Acid rain. Um, so we have nitrogen and sulfur. This is the cause of acid rain. Nitrogen and uh, sulfur resulted from burning of fossil fuels. Combustion just means burning. It's a, um, a more chemistry word of burning. And then after that, you'll have the pH changing and then some death of organisms. But if you remember the food web or, or the food chain, whichever one, when other organisms are being damaged and when other organisms are dying, eventually it's going to get to us. It's, it's not like we're doing bad things and it'll never get back to us. It, it comes back. No worries. The next one is toxins. Um, toxins, um, the one that you should pay the most attention to is antibiotics. Car uh, carcinogens and teratogens, um, this causes cancer, this causes birth defect. Just know it's something that exists. Um, antibiotics, oh wait, a wrong one, pesticides. Pesticides is our typical toxin. Um, and it's not good for other organisms, it's not very good for us either. It's, it's good to a certain degree. That's why they existed in the first place. Here is global warming. Global warming is caused by burning of fossil fuels as, uh, fuels as well. So we have burning of fossil fuels causing acid, causing acid rain, and we have burning of fossil fuels causing global warming. So how is the process of global warming happening? Um, we have first burning of the fossil fuels, and then the uh, greenhouse gases build up in the atmosphere, and then the heat gets trapped in the greenhouse gases, and then the result is global temperature um, rises, and then the rising of sea level. So. This is the whole process written out right here. Carbon dioxide and water vapor, those are greenhouse gases um, going in the atmosphere, causing global warming, ice melts, whatever. Next one is our ozone. Ozone is a layer that protects us from, um, from radiations. Uh, obviously, ozone wasn't formed to protect us. It's just a, a nice result of, of uh, the existence of the ozone layer, however, we're busy ruining that as well, where we were in the past, we're not, we're not as bad now. So the ozone layer was affected by chlorofluoral carbons um, in certain chemicals that we use, so, so in certain material that we use. So this chemical, chlorofluorocarbons, um, is used or used to be used for refrigerants and aerosol cans, um, but we think no longer use it, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, the use of this chemical damages the ozone layer. It breaks it down and then uh, the result is we no longer have some part of this shield for us um, to protect us from the ultraviolet light and other radiations. Um, the result of that is there's more skin cancer nowadays. The last one is uh, invasive species. Is this the last one? Uh, saying the last one is our invasive species. Invasive species is basically any species that's new to the area that wasn't supposed to be in there in the first place is called invasive species. So human can bring invasive species to an area, but animals, um, animals also move around on their own, right? So they can become invasive species on their own as well. If you um, are interested, you could watch this very interesting video about invasive species uh, called killer bees. And why is invasive species a problem? Because if you think about the habitat, right, there is only so much nutrients and so much space and so much sunlight and so much food for all of the organisms living there. And if we have an invasive species, then it can potentially outcompete the native species. And your native species no longer have 
enough uh, food and nutrients and spaces to live. And the invas invasive species might kill some of the native species as well. And the problem with that is, again, we have a food chain and we have a food web, and when one species gets influenced, the other species are going to be um, harmed as well. So here's a picture of um, one of the invasive species called zebra mussels, and you can watch this video as well. It is, it is quite interesting, and it was unfortunate that we were running out of time, so, but maybe I'll show you some other day. The last one is um, instead of pesticides, we could use biological control instead. I said instead twice. Biological control is a way of introducing living organisms to kill off the pests. So instead of using chemicals to kill the pests for your crops, you can introduce some living organisms to eat the pests. So now it's not as bad because you're not introducing toxins to the environment, but is a biological control going to influence the environment too? Probably, but it's probably not as bad as pesticides. So this is Ecology Lecture 9. I hope you learned something.